In our last video, we talked about two basic topologies of analog to digital converters. The flash converter and the successive approximation converter, as well as their advantages and disadvantages. We have found that the flash converters are very fast, but have quite a low resolution, while SAR converters have a high resolution, but are rather slow in comparison. Also, the input voltage must be kept constant with a sample and hold stage during the conversion process. In this video, we want to focus on some other types of ADCs, which belong to the most accurate converter designs available. We will talk about two different kinds of integrating ADCs, namely dual slope and charge balance converters. In general, integrating ADCs are relatively slow compared to successive approximation ADCs, but they excel in precision. They also have another practical feature. They can suppress specific frequencies. In this way, unwanted interference, such as 50 or 60 Hz humming that comes from power lines, can be eliminated. To understand how this is done, we need to know that integrating ADCs always average the input signal for a fixed time interval for each individual measurement. So let's take a closer look on how averaging works. Let us assume that this sinusoidal signal at 50 Hz is our input signal. We can now freely choose our averaging window. If we set it between 0 and T1 and calculate the mean value, this mathematically corresponds to the integration of the sine function between the two time intervals. Graphically, the integral is simply the sum of the areas of the positive half wave minus the sum of the areas of the negative half wave between the time instant 0 and t1. Since we can choose our integration interval freely, we can also set it between 0 and t2 for the same input signal. Now we see that for exactly this frequency, the areas of the positive and negative oscillation of the sine function cancel each other out. This applies not only to the 50 Hz input signal, but also to the integer multiples of the signal frequency. In this case, also 100 Hz, 150 Hz, 200 Hz, and so on, are cancelled out. If we want to know what the averaging process does with an arbitrary signal with different frequency components, we can also look at its attenuation in the frequency domain, where we can see the signal frequency on the x-axis and the attenuation of the signal on the y-axis. If we plot the same diagram with logarithmic scaling, you might see a similarity to something we have already seen in one of our last videos about analog filters. We see that the envelope shows a low-pass behavior. Of course, there are some differences between a real low-pass filter and an integrator. Most importantly, as we have seen, the integrator eliminates frequencies with an integer multiple of the inverse of the integration time. Let's just remember this general idea of the low-pass filter characteristics of the integration process. We can use this in practice to filter out high-frequency interferences that can be superimposed on our analog input signal. If you are interested in the mathematical details of the integration process, we have worked the math out for you here. Just pause the video if you want to wrap your brain around it. Now that we know how the integration process works, it's time to get to know some implementations of integrating ADCs. There are several techniques which have in common that the capacitor is used to track the ratio of an input signal level to a reference voltage. All techniques presented average the input signal for a fixed time interval for a single measurement. Let's start with one of the first high-resolution converter techniques in history that still enjoys great popularity. It's called dual-slope integration. The idea 
is to integrate the input voltage V in over a fixed period of time. This time can be measured as a number of clock cycles with the period T. After a known number of clock cycles, the circuit starts a counter integration with a reference voltage V ref until the voltage at the capacitor again reaches zero. This will take an unknown amount of clock cycles with the same period T. If we count the number of clock cycles x during the counter integration, the reading of x will be proportional to the input voltage V in and can be used as digital output value. Let's look at this simplified schematic of a dual slope converter. The procedure consists of three steps. At the beginning, the switch S1 is closed and the integration capacitor is discharged. In the next phase, S1 opens and S2 is closed. The capacitor C is charged with a fixed number n of clock pulses of duration t. In the last phase, S2 is opened and S3 is closed. The capacitor C is then discharged again by a negative reference voltage. Since the reference voltage has a negative sign, the value of the integral is zero again at a certain point in time. At this point, the comparator interrupts the reference integration. The counter in the control logic displays the result x, which is proportional to the duration of the reference integration. As you can see, as a result, we get rid of both the period of the clock generator T and the RC product of the integrator. The elimination of these two inaccuracies make the process still very popular in circuit design. Dual slope integration achieves very good accuracy even if the clock frequency or capacitor value is slowly changing, for instance because of temperature drift. Since we use the same clock and capacitor for charging and discharging, any errors are cancelled out. In addition, this technique can handle drift or scale errors of the comparator since all these effects are eliminated by starting and ending each conversion cycle at the same voltage. Last but not least, the integration capability of the ADC helps to suppress high frequency noise. You can see that the dual slope conversion has many advantages. These ADCs have high resolutions between 12 and 18 bits and offer good accuracy and high stability at low cost. Another advantage is that the digital output codes are strictly monotonous with increasing input. Unfortunately, the sampling rates are very low, often in the ranges of about 10 samples per second. However, there are applications where low sampling rates are not a problem, such as temperature measurement applications. This type of ADC is also used extensively in precision digital multimeters where their high resolution is often measured in display digits. In addition to dual slope integration, there are many other integration methods. We cannot go into all of them in detail. So let's just take a look at another converter technique, which is the basis to understand the royal class of ADC integration in our next video. Let's meet the charge balancing integrator. A charge balance ADC is basically a voltage to frequency converter. The input voltage is converted into a pulse sequence whose frequency is measured by a counter and converted into an output code proportional to the analog input signal. The main advantage of these converters is the possibility to transmit frequency signals even in a noisy environment. In this picture, you can see 10 periods of a clock signal. The input voltage in this example is 3 tenths of the reference voltage. The input voltage is integrated and compared to a certain threshold voltage. Each time the threshold voltage is exceeded by the integrated signal, a pulse with a duration of one clock cycle is triggered at the output. 
Simply counting the number of pulses where the output is high and relate it to the total number of clock cycles gives a result proportional to the input voltage. Now let's take a look on what the corresponding circuit looks like. The first stage is an operational amplifier that serves as an integrator for the input voltage. At the beginning the output is low, so the integration process starts and the integrated input voltage Vint increases. The next stage consists of a comparator that compares Vint with a threshold voltage. The output D of the comparator is low until Vint has exceeded the threshold voltage. In this case, the comparator then triggers a so-called D flip-flop, which sets its output high at the next rising edge of the clock. This in turn leads to a counter-integration process. A certain amount of charge is sucked off over the time of a clock cycle. If Vint falls below the threshold voltage, the output is low at the next clock cycle. Otherwise, counter-integration continues. In most practical applications, the output of the D flip-flop triggers a switch that adds a high-precision current source for counter-integration. At the output of the circuit, a subsequent counter can count the number of clock cycles the output is high and display the result as a digital value corresponding to the input voltage. Alternatively, the output signal can also be transmitted directly and later converted back to an analog value. This technique is often used because a digital signal is less susceptible to interference during transmission than an analog one. Errors can occur due to the offset voltage of the integrator and due to the switching errors. The switching errors are caused by the D flip-flop and the additional switch because the different propagation delays of the rising and the falling edges. The more often the switching occurs, the higher the error will be. By not allowing the input voltage to exceed half of the reference voltage, we can prevent the duty cycle from becoming greater than 0.5. Now the same relative error results for each feedback charge packet. The uneven propagation delays therefore only lead to a gain error, but not to a linearity error. In general, the synchronous behavior of a charge balance ADC is convenient in many applications, since a synchronous data transfer is often easier to handle than asynchronous. It does mean, however, that the output contains components harmonically related to the clock frequency. This is why it is especially hard to get a good reading of the output with an oscilloscope, since a change of input produces a change in the probability density of the output pulses, which is often misinterpreted as severe jitter. The functionality of the charge balance ADC is the basis for understanding the delta sigma ADCs. These converters are the prime class of ADCs because of their incredibly high resolution and accuracy. We will cover them separately in our next video. I'm Michael with the Institute of Electronics. We hope you've learned something today, but anyway, thanks for watching. For further reference, we highly recommend the following two books. The Art of Electronics by Horowitz and Hill which is very informative as well as entertaining. And for our German-speaking viewers, we recommend Elektronische Schaltungstechnik, written by members of our institute. You can find the exact naming in the video description.